You can see the little detail of the lamb's tongue. I've assembled the post, the oak girder down here, and the top plate up here, and the four post. I'm getting ready to put braces in uh, down here at the bottom. It'll be like a knee brace. So let's get started on that. I've got one in. I'm putting the best face on this side here. This is the back side, which will be covered up. So I'm trying to pick out the side that looks the best and put it on this side. We're looking at the outside of the frame here. I'm coming out 20 inches, and I've made a real tiny mark right here. And that 20 inches is from the edge of the post. And that will be the point where the bottom part of the brace ties into the girder. And on the side of the post, I'm coming up from the girder 40 inches. And I've got a little teeny tiny mark right there. And so that will be where I lay my brace when I scrap fit it. I've got the bottom of the brace on my mark here at the 20 inches out. And I've got the top of the brace on the 40 inch mark up from the top of the girder. And I'm just gonna make two little marks right underneath the, right here. And right down in here. And right here. And right here, just a little bitty mark, and I'll connect those lines, and I'll have something to cut to. I've got my line marked all the way across on the bottom part of the brace. And I've got my line marked all the way across on the top part of the brace. Now I'm ready to cut this. I dug back into the shop yesterday, and this is my dad's old saw. It's a Porter Cable Speedmatic 10-inch blade. Now this is the only saw like this that I have ever seen in my life. It is old, old, old. But it was very, very well made. If you happen to know something about these saws, or if you've seen one, or it, perhaps you have used one, uh, leave it in the comments. I'd like to know more about this saw. Well, let's see what this old dinosaur will do. Well, I made a pretty good cut. You may notice that I have the uh, the blade guard held up. It has a tendency to put me in a little bit of a bind when you on these long angle cuts. But I'm on the opposite side of the timber, so I should be safe here. Not bad for an oldie. I've got one more detail that I'm going to do to this before I buckle it in there. You can see I've got a mark here that is four inches down from that point. And I've got a mark here that's four inches down from that point. I'm gonna take my router and just put a little bit of a chamfer. It won't be as big a chamfer as what's on the edges of the post or on the top plate. I've set my bit a little bit lower on my router to do this since it is a, a smaller timber. Try to keep things in proportion. There's my four inches from the end and my four inches from the end. Once I get that done, then I'm going to take the sander and I'm going to give this a good cleaning up on this side, this side, and this side. You can see I've got two little pieces of wood just screwed onto the back side of the brace. It's just resting on top of the girder. And I've got another one up here it's just resting on the post. And that lets me have free hands just to get that where it needs to be. And I've drilled one hole going into the, the girder. And I've got one hole drilled in my brace to go into the, the post. So I'm going to attach a screw. This is just kind of temporary. This is just to hold it here. I'm going to put a screw into the post and one into the, to the girder. And I can take these off. And that's not too bad of a fit. It'll work. Fits really good underneath here, which is what's going to be seen is on the, the inside of it. But I'll go ahead and get the rest of them on. Then I'll need to take all of this apart and start on another phase of this. Put 
put my little holder stick on here. The other one up here. I don't want to forget to drill my holes here. Not a bad fit. Put one in at an angle here. little bit up right there but I can fix that with a hand plane bring that right down flush with it I've got all the braces in now these are just in temporarily I'll take all of them out and I'll number them where they go and stack them side and I'll unhook my come alongs take them off and all the straps and I'll move all of these timbers uh, and set them aside and get ready for the next phase which will be the floor joist. I'm happy with the way this is going so far. I don't have a set of plans for this. It's just all in my head. And sometimes I have a little trouble pulling it out of there. I'm working on the tie beams that will sit on top of the top plates. These are a, a four by six. They're six foot long. And I'm doing something I haven't done in a good many years. I've cut a scarf in there. And this is the part here that'll actually sit on top of the beam. Now this is a pretty tight radius to cut. And it's kind of slow, but once you get it cut out, it looks pretty nice. Now I've also, I put the chamfer on. I also wanted to do a little extra detail. This is a, a lamb's tongue right here. And it gives it a little nice profile. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to cut this to length, which will be six feet. Now before I do any layout, I want to check and make sure that my top and my bottom are square with the sides. And that's not too bad right there. Just a little bit high on this corner. I'll check both ends of it. And the reason I want to check, especially the, the bottom, is when I lay out that scarf, I want it to this part back here where it starts to sweep i want it to look square across if i'm a little bit cockeyed there my line could go at an angle and i don't want that i want it to look straight across or to be straight across so i'll probably have to do a little work here so that when i connect all these lines it'll look nice and clean and square I'm just shaving ever so slightly. And I think I can live with that. I've got a mark here that's seven and a half inches from the end of the beam. And I've just squared my line across there. That'll be for a reference. And I'm gonna come down from the top four and a half inches and make a mark. And I'm gonna come back this way and mark it again at four and a half. Now take the square and I'm going to connect those points I just made. And I'm going to let this line come on back here pretty good ways. There's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, my mark that I had on top at seven and a half from the end, I'm going to square off of that 
and make a little mark here on that line I just drew. Now I have here a plastic template that I made over 30 years ago. I used this template when I was building our house and it's just got a, a radius here and I've got a small mark right here and I've got a line drawn through here that I can use as a reference. I'm going to line that one little line up on my mark that I just made off of the seven and a half and line this up on my line I drew back here at the back. I'm going to draw that, that radius. Now this doesn't come all the way out to the edge of the uh, timber so I'll have to freehand part of that. Now I won't score that until I get the other side laid out. Okay I have both sides laid out and I'm going to check and see how well I came out where I had to freehand this here right at the very end of the, of the scarf that's sitting there. Now I'm just going to lay a square up here and just check that across to see how close I was. That's pretty close. Enough to draw a line. Now I'll have to freehand this part of the radius to in the scoring. And I can use my little square to get the rest of that. Just covering the line. Okay, I'll get the other side and it'll be ready to cut. I've got one more line to score and that's where the, the two radiuses meet on the bottom edge. And I'm scoring that kind of in line with the way the curve is. Okay, it's ready to cut. Now I'll start brushing this scarf with my little carbon bar just to get the shape of it then I'll clean it up with spoke shave. I've started cleaning this up. What I'm using is a spoke shave that has a curved bottom to it and that makes it a little easier to work this radius. I've already got some of it cleaned up and what I've also done I've got a little squirt bottle and I'm just misting that with water just to soften that a little bit that'll make it a little bit easier because what I'm doing I'm, I'm starting out cutting straight down just nearly straight down on this grain and this piece is nearly nearly a quarter sawn piece it's not exact but pretty close to being quarter sawn and so I've got all this the growth rings and the grain that I'm having to, to deal with. So I've got my plane or my spoke shave set kind of light and I'm just I'm not getting in any hurry with this. Just taking my time. Because you're you're working against that grain there. with this this curve in the sole allows me to kind of go with the flow of the of the curve of the radius there You want your blades really sharp when you're doing this. You want to make that as smooth as you can. Sometimes you'll have to set your blade a little bit deeper or maybe just a little bit lighter. And 
it's not too bad. Now I'll get all this flat area next. I've got the flat part cleaned up and the scarf across here is all cleaned up. It's a little bit wet. You can see that dark. That was from where I sprayed the sprayed it down to soften it a little bit, but that makes for a nice profile. I've got both ends of the tie beam cleaned up and ready for to do the chamfer and the little lamb's tongue. And what I'm doing, I'm coming back four inches from this point right here. And I'll just make a little mark there. I'll make a little mark over here and over here. One on the side. So that I can see it when I'm using the router to cut that little chamfer. And while I'm right here, this template is the one that I also used on my house uh, 30 years ago or so. And uh, I've just kept it for some reason, and I guess this is the reason I kept it, so that I can use it again here. And I've got my little mark here that I'm lining up on my the edge of, or the, where the chamfer will stop. Getting that on there really nice. Just scribing around that. Do the same thing on this side. So I have the outline of the chamfer on the, on the bottom side. I'll just roll this over. And I'll just line that back up there. So I'll just take out everything down to the line. So I've got those laid out, and I'll do this with a, mostly with a draw knife, and I mean it is sharp. But I can go ahead now and take my router and put this chamfer on there. I've got my draw knife really sharp, and I'm just taking out just a little bitty bit, not getting too carried away with it. Just working my way down. Turn my draw knife around so I can actually push. And I'm working back and forth from end to end on this. Just going real gentle with it. When you get down the lower part of that, your grain will change on you. So you've kind of got to work it real gently from end to end. If it doesn't turn out real clean for you, you can always take some sandpaper and kind of clean that up just a little bit. I've had to do that before. I'm going to sand this so I can get rid of any layout marks and just clean it up from where my sweaty hands have been. So that'll help it to look a whole lot better. I've got her all cleaned up, sanded, satisfied with the way it turned out. You can see the little detail of the lamb's tongue. Makes for a nice little detail. I'll anchor seal the ends of it and this part of the cutout of the scarf and the flat area where it sits on top of the beam. <laughs> 